All right. Hey guys, Matt here from Loon Outdoors, and today we're going to be tying the King Tubby Stone. We're going to start with an FW580 from Arex Hooks and a 316 gold metallic gritty bead. 50D is going to be our thread of choice. And what we do is we're going to start by moving the bead back, creating a slight uh, section of touching turns of thread so that we can attach our olive sexy floss super floss or life flex if you will um basically it's one of those three any of uh your local fly shop should have them now the reason that i bring it back so far is that i want to be able to connect my thread again to this thread base kind of just creating a, in my brain a continuous thread base for the fly and connection point once we have the antenna tied in we'll slide the bead back forward and we'll restart our thread kind of right where we left off. Um, so we'll do some good touching turns all the way towards the back of the fly. Um, I go just past the barb on this and for good measure and to ease frustration, I'll go ahead and trim my antennas there. I like to leave my antennas typically longer than the tail. For the tail, we're using the same material. It is a olive... Uh, you know, elastic material. And you can see right now what I'm doing is I'm creating a nice level body. I don't want a huge rear bump on this fly. I want it to be smooth kind of all the way through because we're going to be using a minimalist body material, which is turkey flats. So we're going to go ahead and trim the tail up a little bit there. Um, you can adjust that to taste just for your your own information. So again, I'm going to start and put down a base of my turkey flat. See, I'm tying in the tips, the very fine stuff that sometimes can break on you. It just depends on your turkey feather. And I'm going to use some small brown uni wire as a counter ribbing to help ensure that this uh, fly is durable. So I'm going to break off about six inches, mildly wasteful, um, but uh, it's going to get the job done here. So you can see I don't start that, uh, that ribbing right at the back of the fly. I want to get a turn or two in before I, I do that. And you could use a hackle plier here. Um, I'm just trying to keep it as flat as possible. I like the turkey flat. It's nice and mottled. That's going to have variation of color. And it's going to appear more natural under the water to fish. You know, if you wanted to add some more weight to this fly, you can also, you know, increase your bead size, put, a, you know, an under wrap of, uh, you know, non-lead in there as well. So now we're going to go ahead and counter wrap doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Um, just has to hold those fibers in to ensure that you're going to have a good long lasting fly. So next up is some mini fly flat braid and chocolate brown. This is a really cool wing case material. It has a ton of, it's like a woven material as you'll see. And what that does is it gives it multifaceted, uh, like a multifaceted, uh, sheen to it kind of like a diamond ring if you look at it from like 15 different angles you're going to see a different portion of the flash um the reason i like this is as this fly tumbles through the water you're going to see flash then a dark spot um or a lighter underbelly which we're using uh a pheasant tail ice dub for that um again this is a great fly during runoff um springtime fishing when those Big salmon flies are starting to come around, but you can also tailor this down to a size 18 um, and fish it as like a little black winter stone and get different colors of, uh, you know, turkey to work with. Uh, I love CDC in my patterns. You guys probably see it all the time. So this is going to have a CDC rear collar slash legs. And for that, I am using just a brown. Um, it has a ton of movement in the water. And it, you know, sometimes traps air. Uh, it just looks, it's kind of all over the place and it's uh, a little bit wild, but I seem to have great success with it. So we do a few turns there and we'll go ahead and 
lash that down, uh, kind of in preparation for our, the next steps, which will be, you know, some more ice dub and pheasant tail and our two front legs. So you can see I half my legs and I put them in. And if you're looking down the front of the fly, I put that one in at the nine o'clock position. If you're thinking of the front of the fly as a clock, and we'll throw the second set of legs in at the three o'clock position. You can see I've provided a little bit of segmentation that's going to allow me to, or a separation that's going to allow me to put dubbing between there. And um, the reason I dig the a white dubbing is that it doesn't seem to add or a white thread is that it doesn't seem to add its color to the dubbing, um, if that makes sense. If you, you know, if you put a material over white, it appears to be that material versus if you did it over a black or a brown, then it's going to definitely take on some other hues that you might not normally see. It uh, provides a great cover up and we can use Sharpies to hide it. So I just kind of like continually mash in a ton of this dubbing noodle. <laughs> Um, to build my thorax and I used to tie a fly called the bash and this is definitely a play on that fly um, actually it was the bash in which is the nymph variation and you can see I'm just creating this monster dubbing noodle and kind of figurating around the legs securing them in place and helping to build my thorax a little bit of frizzy ice stub out there doesn't really matter it's a little extra flash Runoff tends to be dirty anyways. Um, I fished this even in some clearer water and have had really solid success. Um, so I fished this, you know, olives, yellows, um, you know, brown, black, basically covering all the colors. You could probably even tie this in all hot purple and you'd find a willing friend to eat it for you. Um, I'm going to use some flow and I'm just going to do a pro progressive flow wing case. Um, you see, I turn my light on because flow is going to want to dive into that material. And by hitting it really quick with the light on an initial, like I call it a short cure, I can really taper where I'm laying the material for that wing case, come back in and do like total easy bake oven, cure it all the way through. But you can see I get a very nice, fine detailed wing case. Um, we'll trim up the legs here just so they're not going to foul on the hook and allow the fly to present incorrectly. So here's a nice stone fly that you could use as a point fly or under an indicator. Hope you guys enjoy it.